were all awarded some type of recognition for valor. Valor was uh, something that was just bad. I want to thank everyone for attending this momentous and historic event. It is my pleasure, but most importantly, it is my honor to introduce a true American hero, Command Sergeant Major Benny Atkins. Command Sergeant Major Atkins was drafted into the Army in 1956 at the age of 22 from Warica, Oklahoma. Sergeant Major Atkins completed initial training at Fort Bliss, Texas, and was assigned to a garrison unit in Gießen, Germany. He had a follow-up assignment to Fort Benning, Georgia uh, with the 2nd Infantry Division. He volunteered for Special Forces in 1961 and served more than 13 years with 3rd, 5th, 6th, and 7th Special Forces Group for three non-consecutive tours. His first tour lasted from February 1963 to August 1963. His second tour was from September 1965 to September 1966. It was during this tour that Command Sergeant Major Atkins distinguished himself and is the reason why we are here today. On this tour, then Sergeant First Class Atkins distinguished himself during 38 hours of close battle combat and 48 hours of escape and evasion against enemy forces March 9th through 12, 1966. Um, you've been selected to receive the highest military honor that the president can bestow on one of its own. What was it like to receive that call? Uh, basically, it's a very humbling experience to uh, be recommended for the Medal of Honor. And it's, um, uh, what I attribute this to is not my action, but the actions of the other 16 Americans that were with us in the battle at Camp Ashow, and especially the five that the Americans that paid the ultimate price. Now, all of the, the 17 Americans that were present in this battle were all awarded some type of recognition for valor. Uh, valor was uh, something that was just there with it. And all of the all of the 17 American Special Forces soldiers uh, were wounded, and most of us multiple times. So, what I attribute the award of this Medal of Honor after 48 years is the continuing support for my for my commander and other members that is on the ground and eyewitness to the activities and like I say again it's a very very humbling experience. Yes, Was this the toughest battle you saw in Vietnam or were there others? Uh, that's what, this was the toughest ba battle I personally saw but I'm sure there were others and uh, many of those may have been much tougher. It's something that uh, is something hard to grasp and realize at this period of time is the fact that uh, from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan, there's been somewhere between 28 and 30 million served in the military. In a situation where there was uh, no ground uh, transportation to get to this isolated uh, Special Forces camp. Uh, we were uh, in a situation where the weather was super bad and we could not get the type of air support that we needed. So uh, the major thing is that uh, there was all uh, in that period of time, think about it, there was about 410 indigenous uh, CIDG uh, soldiers there with us, and uh, of those about uh, 410, only about 122 of them uh, survived, and uh, most of those were wounded. So it was a horrible, horrible type of battle, and uh, yes, uh, they, uh, there was valor all sides, not only from the Americans, but for the uh, 
or the uh, CIDG soldiers also. Then there's many instances involved that uh, assisted it. In other words, it just was not my time that day. Uh, I was uh, blown from the mortar pit on several occasions. Uh, I uh, was uh, fortunate enough to go outside uh, the camp in, in with the enemy and uh, uh, get a one of our wounded uh, medevac out. I also made a trip out in, in the minefield to recover some uh, supplies that was airdropped to us. And uh, so uh, the bottom the bottom line is that it it was just not my day to be when I, I was eventually uh, uh, escaped invasion in the jungle. Uh, they found uh, by helicopter and uh, notified uh, by radio that they were going to come in and pick us up. Well, the helicopter come right in. They shot the helicopter down, so it was too late and uh, too high of an altitude for another helicopter. So we had to evade again. And this was uh, this was the uh, the night that it looked like they had to run us down. The North Vietnamese soldiers had us surrounded on the little hilltop, and uh, we everything started kind of getting quiet, and we could look around. And all at once, all we could see was some eyes going around us. Well, that uh, tiger stalked us that night. We were all bloody. And in this uh, jungle, the tiger stalked us. And the North Vietnamese soldiers were more afraid of the, of the tiger than they were of us. So uh, they backed off some, and we were gone. <laughs> So now, uh, from what I understand, that you, your camp was um, removed from help for with, from, with quite some oh, distance. Yeah, yeah, we were ordered by higher headquarters to uh, to uh, uh, abandon the camp. Okay. Um, and now you were you were separated from help though for uh, 50 kilometers, I believe, was was your nearest uh, aid. Um, being so far removed in that situation, did you feel like? like this could have uh, happened ahead of time, and, and did it happen before this? No, I'll tell you what, it, uh, after a period of time, we uh, found that uh, we were better in the jungle and jungle warfare than the North Vietnamese soldiers that were indigenous to that area were. So uh, the jungle was really an asset to us rather than a death. What, what does it mean going to the White House to receive the Medal of Honor from the President? What does it mean to you personally? Uh, it's going to be, uh, like I say, it's a super humbling experience and uh, I want to want it known that uh, I feel like the Medal of Honor is uh, belongs to those other 16 Americans who were there and especially the five that made their ultimate prize. Well, I've just graduated basic training. Do you have any uh, words of advice as they begin their career? Uh, my advice to them is uh, whether they're uh, a, a one-time soldier or whether they're a career soldier, to absolutely do the best that they can and accomplish the most that they desire to accomplish. Thank you very much. I'm going to end this uh, question and answer period with a statement from Sergeant Major. Um, Sergeant Major, do you want to close? I can say this is uh, a very humbling experience uh, to go through, and uh, I want to uh, I want to thank the um, members of the news media for their uh, courteous attention, and uh, please uh, please uh, support our current military and uh, uh, thank them for their services and uh, like to look over here and tell them if, uh, if you're going down range just keep your head down. <laughs> All right, thank you again ladies and gentlemen for uh, witnessing this very historic event.